I believe happiness is derived from combat, from fighting. Not just fighting professionally, kickboxing or in the cage, Tristan, no. But I believe that if you're thankful for something, you will fight to keep it. If it's your six pack, you'll do training to keep it. If it's your girlfriend, you'll try and keep her happy. Fighting to maintain and retain or gain and obtain shows genuine appreciation. When you're happy for something, you fight for something. So I believe fighting is happiness. And when you look at the world, the happiest people, they say, they call it purpose. Men of purpose, they have a purpose to live for. But I feel like a lot of men now in the world today, Tristan, my old friend, have lots of purpose. Because we all understand the government's trying to kill us. And before COVID and before people woke up, before the mass awakening of the Matrix crack, people didn't really understand the government wanted them dead. So they could go to the club and have fun and party and dance around. But now everybody understands that they're satanic pedophiles sitting in darkened rooms with boners, imagining and planning your ultimate demise. So for that reason, people are now more awake, which means fun is harder to have, but purpose is easier to find because it's your purpose to resist the boner demons who want you dead. And you resist them because you fight for those you love and those you care about and you fight for your freedom and you fight for your ability to speak freely against the hard yet relatively small won a battle, which means you need an enemy. And don't worry, the Matrix has given you an enemy. It's called the people in charge of your whole life. They hate you, so you already have an enemy. So the first thing a man needs is a battle because that gives him, let's call it a struggle, a struggle. You're not happy without struggle, guys. If you were born and the government didn't hate you and you had endless money coming out your ass and you had to never earn to have anything, I guarantee you'd be miserable. The worst experience a man can possibly have is to be born with everything and not have to work for anything because there's no light without dark. Being rich is only fun if you can talk about the times you were poor. Otherwise, it's shit. That's why all the people who are born into these banking dynasties are so miserable and try and inflict their misery upon you because they're sad inside and they hate humanity because they hate themselves. If they were from the streets and got to the top, they wouldn't hate humanity, they'd love humanity. But these people hate themselves deeply, so they hate you by extension. But a struggle allows you as a man to generate positive orgones from the air. You can stand there and attack your enemy and instantly feel happy. Just tweet something. Fuck these boner demons. So we're talking about how the world's a bad place. There's a few things for you to worry about. Not many, not very important, but just to name a few, the fact that they're not letting the farmers grow food, the fact that the currency's inflating and you're never gonna be able to buy a house, the fact that AI is gonna replace most of you, the fact your government hates you, the fact that you live in dictatorships owned by traitors where they're gonna tax you to oblivion to send your money somewhere else to be laundered, the fact that the crime rate's increasing, the fact you can't find a woman worth having kids with, all these things, you know, whatever, no big deal. But when you point these things out, there's one of two options. You can either resist and fight back, like we said in the first point we made, because there's something to fight for. Or you can give up and just go, oh, it doesn't matter. Be an incel, sit online, jerking off, play Roblox, going to Minecraft, building large dildo cities. <laughs> or you can get mad at me for pointing out, you can shoot the messenger. Hey, white people, you're not having kids. Oh my God, you're a fucking, you're a fucking racist, bro. How many kids do you have? None. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> people losers. You can either fight back or give up. But I don't understand most people. Imagine giving up. Imagine it even being an option on the table. How could you not fight? Couldn't be me. I have to resist the enslavement. I am thankful to God for giving me this battle. There is nothing I'm more thankful for than God himself putting my brother and I in the position where we are damaging the matrix in real time because I know men like us don't give up. Some men should know when they are conquered, Tristan. But we don't. For some reason, we continue. We have sure. to fight. So, two, bravery. 
If you have a struggle and you are brave, you will be happy as a man. How do you feel brave for you like this, man? Balls. Correct. It's not about always winning, guys. We've taken our share of sucker punches. They bust in our door. Put me in jail. Took all our stuff. But we were never afraid. We were never cowards. It is the bravery which gives you the positive orgones. Yeah, in fact, on that point, I thought the most hilarious thing we've done, and it went under the radar because we're so rich and so cool and we always have nice stuff, so people didn't realize how cool it was. How we were on house arrest for ages, and the moment they said, when Mr. Prosecutor thought he took all my stuff, had all my money, had all my cars, I keep losing the court, no, we will not give them back, ha ha ha. The moment they said, okay guys, you're allowed to leave your house, within six hours, three new supercars arrived and parked on the driveway. Legal counsel told us not to do that. Balls. Balls! Take the cars and take me back to jail. Don't care. Lame. So, the next thing we're talking about, which is required for a man to be happy, is, and these are just general tweets I put out, but I'm a smart man, so we'll go over them. I don't believe in faking it before you make it. There is nothing fake about belief. You have to wait for the rest of the world to catch up with what you already know. You have to see through time, act accordingly, and prepare to told you so that eternally upsets doubters. Now, when I say this, I do not mean a bunch of clowns, and you see them now, pretending they're a G when they're not. People without achievements pretending they're important when they're not. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you must believe all of the things you want to have are going to happen. You must see through time with a plan in place so you can see it all come true to be the man you want to be. I was not born a kickboxing world champion. I was not born internationally renowned. I was not born with money. I was not born with enough power to grab space time by the throat. But I developed them all and I decided I wanted them and I saw them. It is impossible and I have never in my life seen a man who eats right goes to the gym every day and train hard, not have a good body. The universe is extremely giving. It will give you anything you want. He imagined himself with a good body. He made a plan to get one. He followed the plan and he got it. I've never seen somebody who works hard, who's in the right networks, who's paying attention, like inside of the real world, to up-to-date information, who is not rich. I've never seen somebody who dedicates himself to the gym and eats right, who is not in fantastic physical condition. It's impossible. You can have anything you want. All you have to do is make a plan and see it. So there's no such thing as faking it before you make it. No, you see it and you make it come true. You make everybody else accept your version of reality. You see a version of yourself inside of your mind. And when other people do not see it, when they look at you, you bend space time and change your outward projection, your avatar. So others view you exactly the way you see yourself. It is called belief. Oh, vision. Vision. Nice. You must have a vision for who you could be. There is a version of you in the world which is important, which is respected, which is rich, which is capable, which is charismatic and funny and interesting with big arms and a long Johnson. You're not him yet, but you need to make a plan to become that person. That person exists. You have to make it come true. Now, with a struggle, against mediocrity, against the matrix, against the people who are trying to convince you to psyop you to stay a nobody, with the balls to resist them, and with a vision to become the kind of person you want to be, positive orgones appear. Please understand, you can be happy in the middle of the struggle, in the middle of the stress, in the middle of the war. Every day I wake up, $2 million made yesterday, $1 million stolen by a bank. This girl's crying her eyes out because some baby mama posted something on Instagram. Police at the door. But I'm happy the whole time. It doesn't matter. You could shoot me and I'd laugh. You can derive positive orgones from the battle, which means what happens is you end up addicted to the struggle because you want the positivity from it. You want the dopamine. And if you're addicted to the struggle and you have any semblance of capability, you then become one of the most important and formidable forces on the face of the planet because all you do is fucking fight. 
I don't have any fun. Fun isn't fun. Festivals aren't fun, clubs aren't fun, parties aren't fun, sitting around being a jerk off isn't fun. The only thing that's fun is winning all of the time, which means I work all of the time. People say to me, Andrew, you have so much money. Why all you do is work? Because I want to, because I want to, because I have to win. We are designed, we have evolved, we're biologically wired to want to win as men. It doesn't matter if it's a fucking coin flip. Put me on the street. Get some jackass, and if I lose a random coin flip against a nobody, it'll ruin my day. I, I'm supposed to win. I don't lose. Winning. But Same. how are you going to win without balls, the ability to resist your oppressors, and a vision? How are you going to win without those three things? You're going to stay a fucking loser. What do you call someone who loses? A loser. And you should see how, te how hot tempers get. When, I, when people lose it, you know, in this house. The power of belief is real. Words and thoughts have power. Use them. They are tools and weapons to aid your ascension to greatness. Let me give you a thought experiment, all the people out. If I was gonna shoot you with a gun, a nine mil, and I'm gonna shoot you in the chest, one shot, do you stand a greater chance of surviving if you believe you will not die? You can say one of two sentences before I shoot you. Don't shoot, you'll kill me. Or don't shoot, I will exact revenge. Which one of those two sentences makes you more likely to survive the bullet wound? Just like Steven Seagal. This Wake is up in hospital, go, train. What was that one called? Hard to kill? Hard to kill. Get a gun. Mason Storm. And kill everyone back. Like a fucking hero, like a man. Tristan tweeted something extremely astute, pertinent, and absolutely correct earlier, saying that our generation was raised on Steven Seagal and your generation was raised on fucking Marvel Universe, watching a bunch of fucking girls run around beating up dudes with their fake titties on TV. Doctor Strange! No wonder you're gay! Doctor, Doctor Strange should find a version of reality in which the MCU was never invented and everyone wants Steven Seagal movies. Then Doctor Strange wouldn't need to exist because everyone would be a fucking tough guy like me. The power of words is real. So, you must say things that... I had a very old video before I said, I'm a sayer. Yeah, sayer. I'm a sayer. If I say something, it comes true. Which means I don't need the motivation to do difficult things. I just need to find the energy to say things. But then I have a bond to myself because my word is my bond and my contract is golden where I do them. So if I say I'll do a thousand push-ups, I'll do a thousand push-ups. So when I'm sitting there feeling lazy, thinking I don't want to do a thousand push-ups, I think, well, if I just say it, then I have to do it. And I always have the energy to say something, so then I do it. So that's why I always train. I say I'm gonna train every day, so guess what I do? I train every day because I don't break promises to my fucking self because my word is iron, which means if I've never broken a promise to myself, if everything I've ever said I meant, when I tell the man, if you shoot me, I will exact revenge. That means I'm not allowed to fucking die. My body won't let me. I'll continue to breathe. I'll find the chi deep within my organs so I can come back just to knock on his door, just to make sure his worst nightmare comes true. All of this is more medically, scientifically accurate than the vaccine, by the way. So, all of you vax heads watching this who says this isn't medical science, you're not really in a place to talk, so maybe just shut up and let Dr. Andrew preach. Absolutely, Dr. Andrew. Dr. Andrew tells you that you tell the man with the gun that you will exact certain revenge, and then while you get hit with the bullet, uh, you get your chi from inside your body and you force it back. Uh, and he'll run away because he sees that you did not die. And then one day, later on, perhaps a week, perhaps a month, perhaps a year, one day he hears a knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. He opens the door, look, who is it? What is it? Or he's walking in the park with his children and he glances to the left and far away, 700, 800, 900 meters, there's a man in a long leather trench coat standing there looking directly at him. Some things are worth staying alive for, including revenge. You can fight evil. Sorry, we've lost track of our list here. So we have winning. Winning is important. And the power of words. Winning? Let's call the power of words chi. All these things generate positive orgasms. 
Guys, if you're ever feeling sad, do these things. You'll be happy. I promise. You can fight evil or you can run from evil. The problem is, evil is very, very fast. Now, we point this out in our old emergency meetings about how they're all coming for us. It's everywhere and you can't escape it. But it's fine. If you have these things... It's funny. It's great. It's hilarious. Oh, you want to put me in a 15-minute city, do you? Ha ha ha. Ha ha. This sounds like a perfect opportunity to call some fuck up for you guys, you nerds. What are you do? Take me to jail. A 10-second city. Again. SMID. SMD. Excuse me. 15 minutes. SMD, excuse T me. TMTJ, SMD. So you need to understand that evil's coming. So you need to prepare for it. And you prepare for it through positivity. God is light. Positivity is how you resist what they want you to be. They want you depressed and sad. Please understand one of the main reasons they attack my brother and I is because our influence inspires bravery amongst men. We make you laugh, we make you brave, we make you courageous, we make you unafraid to say what you think, even if there are consequences. That's what they're afraid of. They want you scared, they want you depressed, they want you sad, they want you meek, quiet and mild. They want you sitting there, listening to fucking Ben Shapiro, jerking Jerk off. off. That's what they want. It genuinely upsets them how much I don't care about going to jail. Oh, well, let's work four years in our little office to try and find a way to put him in jail again. Oh, what's he saying on Rumble? Hey, guys, take me to jail, losers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. You are truly disciplined when you have so much belief in the importance of your actions that the rest of the world feels like an unnecessary distraction. Why would I want to have fun when I can work instead? I can be proud of myself for doing what was hard as opposed to entertained by doing what was fun. Proud is larger than fun. People like this are impossible to beat. And also, let me tell you, people who don't see that are impossible to reason with. There are people who be like, Oh, that sounds miserable. He just works, doesn't have fun. You don't understand the feeling of making a hundred million dollars. You don't understand the feeling of buying items where there's only 30 of them in the world and no one else can have them. You don't understand the feeling of doing things no one else can do. So keep your fucking concerts, keep your festivals, keep your porn, keep jerking off. It's the jerk off mindset. You can look, you can say, oh, they don't go to concerts, they don't do this, they don't smoke drugs, they don't do all the stuff that people think is fun. But giving in to impulse as opposed to being disciplined does not lead you to a to a space of happiness like chasing fun does. And you could boil all these things down to jerking off. Yeah, if you think nice, about it, nice. the type of guy who jerks off nice. for fun yeah. will sit here and say, well, those guys never want to have fun. They just blah, blah, blah. No, because when you're the elite of the elite men, you can have sex with the best of the best women in the world. I don't need to jerk off. And that, that applies to absolutely everything you do. Well, I smoked weed and went to a went to Coachella. These guys are missing out. You're missing out. Kill yourself. Nice. And you're right. Fun is not as fun as struggle. Fun is not as fun as feeling brave. Fun is not as fun as having a vision and making it come true. Fun is not as fun as, as victory. victory. And nothing's as fun. Nothing's as, as fun as victory. Do you, think Do you think Napoleon had fun campaigning in the fucking cold? No. He could have stayed in France. Drank wine. How many French people were rich in 1803? How many? In 1805? How many French people were rich in Paris? What? Tens of thousands? Yeah. Thousands at least. How many names do you know around that time? Three? Three? Yeah. Two? Yeah. Fucking almost zero? Because one man chased victory and the rest did the, I guess, time period equivalent of jerking, jerking off. off. They went to the French 1805 version of Coachella. Aha, we Je are cheese, we are the 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 yeah, I have so much fun. Maybe I can have sex with a woman who doesn't smell as bad as the rest of them. Who cares? Nobody cares. So when you're going to this Coachella shit, or you're going to the club, or you're chasing fun, where's the victory in going to the club? You think the victory in going to the club is, hey man, I got in the club, I had the best table, and I had sex with a girl. There's no victory in having sex with girls. Girls have sex with everyone now. You know what? I'm an old man, I'm 37. When I was 21, having sex with a girl was perhaps a victory. 
one, because I was young and less accomplished. And two, because women were harder to have sex with. Nowadays, if you have any semblance of money at all, having sex with women is basically impossible to not do. You, I, I go out to fucking get my mail and accidentally fuck a bitch. It happens. They're just everywhere and they're begging. It's ridiculous. Especially if you have money because women do not want jobs anymore. They'll do anything to not work. Anything. They'll say they love you. They'll do it all. Anything to not work. I get thousands of love letters a day from women. Me. Who's trapped in Romania with a human trafficking case. Yeah, the, the, the amount of female attention I get has probably tripled since I've been labeled a human trafficker by the media. You know? Nice. Well, I don't really believe that, but Great you know, for the human trafficking but, business. But, uh, but I like a bad boy. If I wanted to human traffic, now's the time to start. They're all interested in coming now. Fucking keep an eye on me, d -call. So fun isn't fun. And the fact that you think it's fun shows you're a dipshit. Because these things are fun. Because these give you masculine, positive orgones. So, next tweet. We talk about all the negative things in the world today. And there's a bunch of them. But please understand that losing hope is fatal. Hope is a requirement for success. My whole life was built on hope. You do not become a four-time world champion without it. You cannot put yourself through the training required, through the sacrifices and pain, unless you believe and hope that you're going to win, that it's going to pay off in the end. You must believe in yourself. You must believe. People say to me all the time, Andrew, I heard the war room kicks people out if they don't meet the metrics. I said, yes, that's true. The war room is the best network on the planet because every single year we kick people out, which means that every single year, let's say you have a thousand people, if 500 get kicked out, you're left with 500 of the winners. More people join all year. Again, a year later, 500 are kicked out, you're left with 500 of the winners. So it's cream of the crop. It slowly over time condenses into a network of ultra winners. And we get better with every year, as opposed to most groups that let people in and dilute, ours gets better. And they say to me, but what if I don't make the cut? How are you gonna fucking talk about failure before you've even tried, joined, know what the metrics are for success? You're already talking about losing. You haven't even fucking tried. You're exactly. That's the, why you're gonna lose. You're exactly the type of person who types to me on Twitter. Well, not everyone can make it. I'd be the kind of person who says, that sounds like exactly the kind of network I wanna be in. That sounds like the kind of network I wanna be in. I don't care what it takes. I'm gonna make it. Because the world is actually structured the same way. There's not a big bad man named Andrew Tate who kicks you out like in the war room. However, in, maybe not jobs, industries, if you're not competitive, you fail and you're out. The dating market, if you're not competitive, you fail, you're out. Any type of sports career, if you're not competitive, you fail, you're out. And the only people people watch play football on the TV or play tennis on the TV or the only people renowned for being automotive giants are the people who succeeded. Lots of people probably tried to start electric car companies in the past 30 years. Oh, for sure. How many do you know? One? One. I know one man. Why? Because he fucking nailed it. So the world is structured exactly the same way, but you fade into obscurity rather than being kicked out. And you don't realize you're out, but you're fucking out. You can achieve your dreams but you need to regain your hope. I am here to show you it is possible. I will be freed from this jail cell. I tweeted that on March 29th, almost exactly a year ago, a year and one month ago from a jail cell. Was I telling the truth? I never lost hope. I knew sooner or later, three, I will be free. Three, it doesn't eight. matter if they take three years of my life or 30, sooner or later, I will be free. And sooner or later, I'll be able to tell them what happened. And guess what guys at home, we haven't even told you what happened. Oh, you have no idea. You have no idea the level of corruption we're facing. We haven't even told you the things we know yet. They're going to put us back, probably. See, in jail, the, the video is already made live on Rumble the moment I get arrested again. It's all fine. It's all fine. It's hilarious. But I never lost hope. I had my positive orgones. So let's write hope down because hope and vision are slightly different. Vision, you can see where you want to end up. But hope is the belief that for sure the vision will come true. The reason they hate us so much is because we make you feel good. When you watch our content, you're not afraid of their bullshit anymore. When they come along and say, COVID's gonna kill us all, perhaps you were sitting there with your tiny PP, a little bit worried about it. Jerking off. Jerking off. But 
if we weren't censored back then, like we were, if you knew about emergency meetings back then, imagine they tried to do COVID now and they did an emergency meeting and we told you all to go outside and tell them to get fucked. You'd probably go outside and tell them to get fucked. It would all fall apart instantly. We make you feel happy and brave. They do not want you happy. They don't want you to smile. So we have to put smile down because smiles piss them off. What, the, what photo went most famous on my last arrest? Me smiling, walking out of court, knowing I've been matrix attacked in my top G hoodie. <laughs> because we have to feel like we can win this battle against the matrix, because we can. Ultimately, it's still humanity that has control. There's more of us than them. And as long as we smile in the face of certain death, they have no weapon to scare us with. How can you scare a man who's not afraid to die, not afraid of jail? What you gonna do? Lock me up and give me a free meal every day. Conjugal visits with my fucking harem. Give a shit. Free. So, what? Your your worst punishment is, pay my rent. is free soup. <laughs> That's the worst you've done to me, is give me free soup. Free cockroach. Free target practice. No wonder my fucking kata is stronger than ever before. I'll sit in there and remaster Shotokan. Give a shit. So get a pen and paper and take note. Another thing that's going to give you a lot of motivation and power as a man is helping other people. Yeah. It's inside of the masculine imperative to provide and to protect. If I love a woman, I want to protect her. I want to give her things and I want to make sure she is safe. This is how I feel naturally. It's my natural inclination. For the same reason, because of my monumental power and my monumental influence, I feel obligated to help the world to the best of my ability, which is why we have TakePledge.com. Another thing you should be doing is trying your very best, watch you write this down, number seven, to help people, to give to other people. You have enough money to give some away. You have enough time to take 10 minutes out your day and help somebody who is worthy. Don't be used by users and losers, but you have enough time. When I watch videos of the number of people I have fed with my own time and money, we talked about how you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, if you spend time with powerful people, you'll feel more powerful. So let's write network down here at number eight, which is the war room. We're not gonna talk about it on this show. You can learn all about it on CobraTake.com. If you're the kind of person who understands the power of a network, you're gonna be the kind of person who joins. So those are two more very important things I want to mention. If I tell you, you have to pull something off in less than a year, there's two kinds of people. People who say, what happens if I don't do it? And there's people who say, I'll do it. No problem, no matter what it takes, I'll get it done. Tristan, Mr. Producer, it's not a necklace. It's actually an emblem which reminds me of the true reality of this cold world, that when bad things happen, you only have brothers you can rely on who are prepared to die beside you. The women and the children who love you, you must protect, but the only people who protect you are your brothers. So, in the darkest hour, when the demons come, call on me, brother, and we will fight them together. You're around men. What do we say here, number eight on the board, network. You're around people who make you feel powerful, then you do difficult things with ease. If you're around people that make you feel weak, you're gonna do difficult things. Well, you're not gonna do them at all. You can do hard things with difficulty. You can do easy things with difficulty, I apologize. Which is the exact point of a network. That your friends are supposed to bring out the best in you, and sometimes the best in you is the worst in you, according to the Matrix, being brash and loud and confident. They don't want you to be these things. They want you to be depressed and sad and meek. So it's very important that you have a network which is inspiring you to do the right thing. Absolutely. So that sounds like fantastic news. I want you all to understand something because we talked about some very important things today and I hope you took some notes that will allow you to build a positive mindset because understand that your mindset, your mentality is the framework, the software which your hardware operates under. When we talked earlier about how you have to be Im impossible to hurt by bullets because you're promising to exact revenge, that is installing software that allows your hardware to operate differently than as opposed to you being afraid of the bullets. So your mindset, your mentality, how you view the world is the software which programs your hardware and it's extremely important that you do not believe in things that take away power from you and you extract positive orgones from the universe by eternally struggling in battles which allow you and your bloodline to ascend to the highest possible echelons of masculine achievement. When you're doing this, you'll automatically and naturally become an enemy of the system, an enemy of the matrix, because the matrix wants to keep you suppressed and oppressed. It wants you to keep you depressed with an empty mind so that they can install the slave programming at will and instantly change it. From COVID to Ukraine to climate change to dildo to whatever they want you to shove up your ass, they want to make sure your mind is empty so they can put it on the news and you instantly comply without questioning them. You will do that if you're depressed and you're afraid of fighting back. 
it's very difficult to have an opinion which allows you which requires you to battle the mainstream consensus if you're afraid of a fight. If you're too scared to fight, you're not gonna have opinions which go against the mainstream consensus because you can't defend them. If you're too weak or too depressed or too sad to fight, once again, you will instantly swallow the shit sandwich that they give you. You will eat the bugs, you will take the dildo. They want you sad, which is why it's very important that you are happy. But we are winning this war. We're gonna try and spread hope because I want you guys to understand something very pertinent about the world you're currently living in. The Matrix does not loudly announce its losses, but the losses do happen. Just because they won't tell you they're happening, why would they? Because it will inspire more resistance. It doesn't mean they're not happening at all. They're afraid and they are very unhappy with certain key things which have happened that we're all aware of. El Salvador has gone from the most dangerous to the second most safest nation in the Western Hemisphere. It was nothing complicated. They just arrested the criminals. That's it. Arrest the criminals, put them in fucking jail, done. They could do that anywhere else. They refuse to do that anywhere else because it is only one or 2% of the population that make an entire area unsafe. They could do it in America. They could fix all the cities. They don't want to fix it. They want the chaos. They want the mess so they can print more money, so they can come to you with more bullshit and more different governors to vote for and more false division and false garbage and false choice. They do all of this on purpose. But the fact El Salvador fixed everything is allowing people to understand that it can be fixed. This is a massive loss for the Matrix. They're afraid now that even billionaires are going to jail. Maxwell, Lachine Maxwell, whatever her name was, she's in jail. That would have been unthinkable 10 years ago because without the public pressure, without social media, without Twitter, without everyone screaming. Now, do we have everyone off Epstein's list? No. Is it perfect? No. But it still is good that one of them is facing punishment, at least. Without public pressure, that never would have happened. That's a massive win that the Matrix doesn't like because now the people in charge are understanding there is, although slight, a possibility they'll go to jail. Before it was unthinkable because no one knew who they were. No one shunned light on their crimes. Remember, God's truth is light. Doing the work of God is telling the truth. People's understanding is deeper than it used to be. It's not the same. We used to be very shallow in our understanding of how politics worked, of how the MSM lied about how money isn't real. All of these things are now becoming understood. The evil, and by evil I mean the sadistic and demonic plutocrats who have lorded over populations for millennia are finally vulnerable and afraid, and they're afraid of speech. They're afraid of the truth, and they're afraid of you being motivated and positive and happy, not depressed. They want you depressed. They feed you shit food. They give you porn. They get you shit entertainment to distract you. They put you in a situation where you can't viably afford a home in this economy. They keep you broke. They do anything they can to keep you sad because they are afraid of you. They don't want you to wake up and be strong and motivated. Heaven forbid you also get rich. Heaven forbid you also start telling everyone else to do the same thing. Heaven forbid you got a bald head and a long Johnson. If you do that, they'll put you in fucking jail. They are scared now. They are afraid. We are finally starting to beat these people for the first time in modern history. And we're also living in a world where it's perhaps the best time to ever be alive in a first world country. We have some of the best possible lives ever. Remember, kings didn't have hot water. Kings! Kings didn't have ice. You have both, and you're broke. The world is great. You just have to stop allowing them to suppress your spirit. You must continue to fight back and understand that they're not advertising their losses, but their losses are happening because they are losing their ability to lie. Their entire structure, all of the castles are built of pure deception. It's a house of cards. They can't lie. They need lies to prop up the lies. They tell a lie to get caught. They lie why they lied. Then they'll tell a lie about the lie that they used about why they lied in the first place. Then they'll come up with another lie to distract you from the first set of lies. Once they can't lie, it all falls apart. And now every time they say anything, nobody believes them anymore. There's finally consequences coming. X and Rumble, Telegram, Substack are leading the charge in the ability for people to tell the truth now. They need lies. We need truth. Truth exists, lies don't. That means they need infinitely more energy than we need to win. 
When you tell a lie, it takes exponential energy to propagate and promote and float that lie out in the universe. You have to repeat it so many thousand times to try and convince the slave populace it's true. When you tell a truth, you say it once. And you say it once to let people's God-given innate consciousness absorb the truth. And they'll sit there and go, wait, that actually makes sense. Wait, the whole world makes, it makes a lot more sense under this framework of thinking as opposed to the framework of thinking on the news. I can tell a truth once. They have to tell a lie 10 million times. It's a battle in which they will fatigue before us. It takes too much energy. They're inefficient. The efficient man wins in a boxing match. Maybe not in round one, maybe not in round two, but in round eight, nine, and 10, it's about who has what left in the gas tank. Truths travel further. There are men out there who are made invisible because of what they know. A critical mass is forming on X as what was hidden can finally be said. There's not just us, there's a whole bunch of other people who were deleted long ago, who were censored long ago, who know a lot of truths about the world, who are about to come back. We are gonna gain more warriors as free speech spreads throughout the internet. They were not prepared for the internet. They were not prepared for this. They were using it. They were using the internet during the Arab Spring to topple governments. They never expected the internet to topple their own castles of lies. It turned on them. Now they're panicking, trying to pass emergency legislation. But these are all huge losses for the matrix. Be motivated, be happy. My brother and I didn't go to jail for no fucking reason. We are winning. Putting us in jail highlighted the corruption of speaking against these people. They shot themselves in the foot putting us in jail. In the end, it worked in our favor. And you need to understand that perfection is not the standard. And the enemy of your enemy is your friend. When they can't print money from the fucking sky and enslave you with it, e.g. force you to work your ass off for these paper pieces of shit that don't mean anything which they print faster than you can ever possibly save so you'll never own anything anyway when they can stop enslaving humanity with things they print because they can't just go to war at random with their lies a lot of the world's problems will be fixed every single time you do the right thing it's an act of resistance Every time you go to the gym and train when you don't feel like training is an act of resistance. Every single time you make enough money to retire your mother or give charity to somebody in need is an act of resistance. Every time you smile when they want you to be depressed is an act of resistance. Every time you watch the MSM and say, I don't believe you is an act of resistance. That is what they're afraid of, mass resistance, passive resistance. Then putting a lie on the news and you shaking your head and going, not this time, nope. That's resistance. They are losing now and they are afraid. And you should be happy about those things. You should be happy that every single time they open their mouths, they're called exactly what they are, fucking liars. There's a version of you that never sleeps in, never skips training, never wastes time. There's a version of you who never fails. It is waiting for you. Genuinely ask yourself a question, you at home. If you had done those things for the last two years, you never skipped the training. You never wasted time. You never scrolled TikTok. You never sat aimlessly on the internet typing in garbage, never played video games. You never wasted time. You never skipped training. You were training every single day. You never slept in. You were never lazy. There's this version of you. Imagine the person you would be. Genuinely imagine what you would look like. Imagine where you would live. Imagine the car you would drive. Imagine how much your woman would respect you. Imagine the love you would see in her eyes when she looks at you with adoration like a king. Imagine your existence. That person is waiting for you. And the only thing that's stopping you from being that person is your monumental laziness. You can have it. The universe is very giving. It will give you anything you work for. I've never seen somebody try for something with all of their might and not get it. The only people who do not have the things they want are the people who do not try for them. I've never seen a person wake up and say, my only dedication in life is to solve a Rubik's Cube and fail. You are not stupid. You are not incompetent. You are lazy and arrogant. It's extremely important you understand that that person is waiting for you and you are declining that version of yourself. In the multiverse, in the many different versions of the universe that exist, there is a version of you that does those exact things. And he is a greater person than you can even fathom. You can transform yourself into that guy. You can be a top G. That's exactly what I did. I knew who I was gonna have to end up being before I became that person. My brother and I are not from rich families. We were not from advantaged beginnings, but I knew I had to be a big, strong, fighting billionaire. That's what I knew I had to be. Discipline is the key to success. If you cannot force yourself to do something you don't want to do, 
How are you ever going to put yourself through the suffering required for greatness? If you cannot force yourself to train when you do not want to train, if you cannot force yourself to work when you don't want to work, if you can't force yourself to not log into Pornhub or force yourself to eat right, how can you possibly ever become a monumentally successful person if you cannot control yourself long enough to do what must be done as opposed to what you feel like doing? The only people who get to live their lives based on how they feel are women and children. Children can cry because they feel like crying, as can a woman. A woman can start an argument because she feels like arguing, as can a child. A man must do what he is supposed to do regardless, irregardless of how he feels. That is the key component to masculinity is discipline. If you do not have the discipline to dedicate yourself to anything, you are going to fail and be crushed by the people who can. If you only go to the gym when you feel like going to the gym, you're never going to be as strong as the people who go to the gym when they don't feel like going to the gym. That is a reality of life. So, I train every single day. I've actually heard from some people saying, you overtrain. And I explain to them, one, I don't believe in rest. I'm not you, I'm not pussy, and I'm not broke like you are, Mr. Fitness Trainer, standing around the gym teaching people for $50 an hour. I don't need to listen to you. Secondly, I don't train because I want to get bigger. I train every day because it is difficult to train every day. It hurts. I don't want to. I wake up and I'm busy. I have other things to do. I don't feel like doing it. So I force myself to do it seven days a week, 365 days a year so that I know I'm the kind of person who can do what he doesn't want to do when it needs to be done. I am that man. And it's more of a mental exercise than a physical exercise at this point. How can you ever outcompete me if I can force myself to do the things I don't want to do and you cannot? Discipline is absolutely essential for success and you need to get very comfortable and very used to the idea of understanding that on your path to greatness, there are going to be long periods of time where you hate what you are doing, where you are dissatisfied with the actions you must undertake, where you are tired, where you are stressed. That is why it is difficult. That is why most people won't make it. If the path was easy, everybody would walk it and it would lead nowhere. A hundred people start the path, 99 fall off because it is difficult and the one person who makes it to the end gets the gold. If all a hundred made it to the end and the gold was divided by a hundred, it wouldn't even be worth anything. The difficulty gives it value. The fact that it is difficult to do is the key component into the fact you want it in the first place. If it wasn't difficult, everyone would have it and you wouldn't want it because no one would respect it. It's supposed to be hard. Life is supposed to be hard. You're supposed to think this is terrible. You're supposed to suffer and smile through the pain regardless. Discipline is the key to success in all realms as a man. And if you lack it, you stand no chance. You can give most people a roadmap to success. You can give them a Ferrari with a full tank of gas and a lot of people still wouldn't make the destination because they would say the drive is too far away. Quitters, they don't have the discipline. You can tell them exactly how to do it. You can give them the mechanism to get there, but they don't have the discipline to complete the drive and end up at the destination. That is the majority of Earth. This is your competition. People who, even if they are told what to do and people tell them exactly how to do it and help them do it, still quit, still fail because they lack discipline. Even me, with my monumental powers, I can't make a quitter successful. It doesn't matter how good I am. It doesn't matter how easily I make it for them to succeed. It doesn't matter how compendious and concise and powerful the real world is. It doesn't matter how much I text them and motivate them, how many emergency meetings I do to try and talk to them and hype them up, how much motivation I give them. It doesn't matter what I do. If they are a quitter, guess what they're gonna do? They're going to quit. No matter how simple the map is to read, no matter how fast the Ferrari is, somewhere along the drive, the sun's going to get in their eyes, and they're going to sit there and go, this is, I don't like that, this is hard, and they're going to quit. Quitters are the number one type of people that nobody can help. If you're a quitter, I can't help you, life can't help you, God himself cannot help a quitter. So if you lack discipline, you lack the very basic building block to any type of success which exists on the planet. By every single metric which can be measured with science, you are going to stay a loser and a failure. Key is to keep training. If you train hard every single day, you don't have to worry about a little bit of vitamins. It's true. If you don't train and you don't smoke, you're still gonna be a pussy. Yes. The answer is always hard, hard work. work. As soon as you are granted life, you are guaranteed death. What you do in between is up to you. You are all conscious. That could end tomorrow, that could end in 100 years. But the time between the beginning of your consciousness and the end of it is completely up to you. Training is never the wrong decision. If you're in jail, you should train. If you are free, you should train. 
If you are rich, you should train. If you are poor, you should train. If you smoke, you should train. If you don't smoke, you should train. If you drink, you should train. If you don't drink, you should train. You cannot escape that hard work. It's always the correct decision. There is no time in any scenario when working hard is going to be the wrong answer. You should always try your very best in all things. I will smoke 10 cigars a day and beat the shit out of you because I train harder than you can possibly fathom. Pain is an extremely important part of the equation. Pain is the elixir of success. When people say this bad thing happened to me and I'm suffering, I say good. It is pain which is required. It's one of the elements in the chemical reaction. And the chemical reaction requires five particular uh, distinct compounds and you have four and you're missing one. It simply doesn't work. Pain for a man is one of the most important elements in becoming successful. Batman is Batman because they killed his parents. If they did not kill his parents, he would not be Batman. You're supposed to suffer. You're supposed to take that pain. The worst thing that can happen to you as a man is you live a life with no pain in it. To be born into a rich family and have a nice, easy life and be given money and you don't have to go to the gym and not have to train because you have bodyguards and sit around like a fuck up. You're going to be miserable and unhappy and a drug addict buying prostitutes. You're only going to have women who adore you. You're only going to feel confident in yourself and feel happy when you've been through hell and come out the other side. The pain is required. And you'll often notice that people who are better than you are people who have suffered more than you have suffered. So the person who is waiting for you, he requires your motivation. It also requires huge amounts of pain. So when bad things happen to you, do not sit at home and lament. Do not feel sorry for yourself. Instead, look in the mirror and say, thank you, God, for giving me one of the ingredients that is needed for the chemical concoction that is going to turn me into a superhero. Because pain is an extremely important one. In fact, it's one of the most important ones for a man. Everything is war. All of it. Sitting in the commute without losing your patience is war. Trying to find a way to escape your slave job is war. Keeping your wife happy and your children inspired is war. Training to become stronger than before is war. It is all war and it cannot be avoided. And I'll tell you why it's war, because war is two opposing sides trying to achieve the same goal. Two opposing sides want the same land or the same influence over X land. And the car you want, the Ferrari, you're not the only person who wants it. The reason it's so expensive is because other people want it. The, car, the girl you want, the beautiful woman, everyone wants her. It is war. It is competition. Everything about life as a man is war. It is conflict because you are competing against the other men who want it the same, which is why discipline is such an important thing, which is why you must take the pain and add it to the concoction to become as formidable as possible. Life is war. This idea that you can go through life as a man and avoid war is probably the biggest mistake that most men make because it is impossible for you to achieve anything significant without war. Running a business is war. Running a hotel, running a restaurant, running an online company, it's war. Training is war. Life as a man is war. You need to wake up and view it exactly as what it is. Everything I want, other people want. Everything I desire, other men are trying to get. This is a war and I must outcompete them. That is the best possible mental model you can have, even in jail. It was a war for who could stay most calm. A war who could control their mind the best. A war for who could suffer the least. That is war. I was surrounded by people who lost their minds and I refused. It was a battle and I was successful. Life in and of itself as a man is a never ending struggle and a never ending battle. It is the constant of the human condition. Evolution requires pain. While others complain that they do not feel happy enough, I'm happy I'm struggling. I don't want to be happy. I want to be great. This is the beauty of life as a man. Do you understand? I don't care. I'm happy to be struggling. I wanted to fight. You wanted to win. I wanted to fight. That's the difference. You're concerned with winning. I wanted to just fight. And we're fighting. That is the beauty of life as a man. To be great. If you concern yourself only with being happy, you are once again acting like a female or a child. Happiness is fleeting. It doesn't even matter if you're concerned only with the hedonism of happiness. You're going to drink alcohol and go to parties and go to festivals and take drugs. I want to be happy. Who cares? I want to be great. I want to be great all of the time. And let me ask you a question as a man at home, genuinely, truthfully. Would you rather be a loser who's always smiling, a happy loser, or would you rather be a stressed winner? 
Because I'll tell you something about winners. Most of them are stressed. We are stressed. <laughs> We're stressed. Putin is stressed. Genghis Khan was stressed when his messenger turned up after a four-week ride with updates from the battlefront of Iran. I'm sure he was stressed by what he read. Even if it was very good, even if it all looked fantastic, he started to feel stressed. Okay, well now maybe I need to go to Iran. How long is it gonna take me to get there? Maybe we need to send more horses. Maybe we need to colonize her, uh, Iran. He, he felt stressed because the beauty of life as a man is to be great. So you have to sit here and ask yourself, do you want to be a happy loser that's insignificant? Nobody knows you exist. Women don't respect you. Men don't respect you. Nobody cares if you live or die, but you get to smile all the time. Or do you want to be one of the most important people on the planet with a little bit of stress? I am brilliant because I've decided to be brilliant. And if I have to sacrifice happiness to be brilliant, then that's fine. You know what the great thing about it is? You know what's amazing what God gives, how the whole world becomes full circle? If you stop caring about being happy and you start caring instead about being great, guess what you end up being? Great. Along with great. And you know what? Yeah, happy. You end up happy if you forget about happiness and try to become great. You will never be successful if you're concerned about being happy. So forget about it. I like to consider myself a wise old man, and I'm trying my best to encourage and instigate a revolution amongst the youth where men take absolute self-accountability and they believe in themselves and they take responsibility for absolutely everything. As a man, you are most formidable if everything is your fault. If it rains outside and you get wet, that is still your fault. Can you control the rain? No. Could you have brought an umbrella? Yes. You need to blame yourself for all things, the good and the bad. And by doing this, you take absolute self-accountability, which allows you to build a mental model in which you will find solutions, one, to avoid trouble, because you know that anything bad happens to you is your fault, and three, be the most fearsome competitor possible, because we're living in a very competitive world nowadays amongst the elites, the people who understand that you're living inside of a fish tank are trying very, very hard to get out, and you have to make sure that you can outrun some of them if you want to escape. There's an age-old adage, if a bear is chasing a group of people, you do not have to be the fastest one. You just have to be faster than the slowest. The slowest person is going to die. So as long as you're ahead of the majority of people, you stand a very good chance of avoiding slavery. Being a powerful man isn't always about furious anger and instilling fear. As enemies attempt to attack your energy and lower your vibration, understand this. Power is untouchable. Power may notice, but it doesn't care. Sometimes power is simply not giving a fuck. Being a powerful man isn't always about furious anger and instilling fear, meaning sometimes it is. You need to retain the capability to instill fear with furious anger. A man who cannot do that is not a man. It is one of the cards you need to have in your deck. However, more often than not, when you're in the true position of power, you will play the alternate card, which I'm describing here, is simply not caring. How can you not give a fuck about things? Well, I'll tell you how. You're filthy rich and you have a strong network of people around you who you trust and you have a good family and you have beautiful children and you have women who love you and you have beautiful supercars you live with your best friends in a compound you have armed guards and you're proud of yourself and you're strong and you train hard every day and you're monumentally successful and all of your dreams come true and if you want something you can instantly snap it up you want a Pagani, you want a Bugatti you want a 25 million dollar apartment anything you want you buy it's very easy to not give a shit about the opinions of people who don't have one fraction of your success. Mm. And what these people are trying to do is drag me, I'm um, using me as an example, but we can also use it for you. When you have true power, they're trying to drag you down. They're not trying to elevate themselves. They're trying to drag you down, which is a very different thing. Because it's amazing how God rewards those who are trying to build and create and elevate and how it punishes those who are simply trying to destroy and be spiteful and negative. And these people are going to dedicate hours and hours and millions of hours of their life towards a certain cause to try and drag people down who they cannot affect because they're already too powerful and too large. And they're wasting their own human experience and they're not progressing or advancing themselves in any way. They will stay brokies and we will stay rich forever. So the lesson here is that you need to get to a position where ignoring people is a move in which you're guaranteed success. You can ignore people completely and they are benefiting you. And that comes from a position of power. And I think a lot of you at home right now, you may not be in our position, but if you're already working hard, you're already going to the gym, you're already training, you make sure that you're getting as much muscles as possible, as much money as possible, you're dedicated, you don't sleep in, you don't waste your time, you don't smoke weed, you don't play video games, you're focused on trying to become fantastic as a person. You can just ignore that girl. That girl who broke your heart or, or cheated on you, just ignore her. The most powerful move you can make is ignore her. Yeah, you could yell at her. Yeah, you could try and make her scared of you, blah, 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 right? That's mm -hmm. not going to work. The powerful move is just to completely ignore her yep. because 
you're on your ascent. She is likely on her descent. She likely has no intention of improving herself, no intention of becoming richer, no intention of becoming better looking. Time is against her. As she gets older, she's going to lose her looks. You're going to continue your ascent and she's going to have to watch you for the rest of her life be the man that she could have been with that she's no longer good enough for. The best thing you can do is simply ignore her. That is the powerful yeah. move. And it's the same with also men. It's not even a gendered argument. There's men who want to be your friends right now who wanted to be your friend and they did something wrong to you. And if you're on the right path doing the right things, karma, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, is going to teach them a lesson for simply failing to be a good person to you while they had the chance. But when you have a whole bunch of money, you take care of the people you love. And that's the masculine prerogative. And even my brother and I, anyone who's been loyal to us, who's on our team, we monumentally reward. And everyone who ever displayed cowardice or sold us out or made mistakes massively regrets it because they see how well we treat the people who are close to us if you lack somewhere excel somewhere else mm -hmm. counter your weaknesses by honing other capabilities if you're ugly become filthy rich if you're poor be as strong as an ox life is unfair the primary focus of your energies is to balance the books and there's two different ways you can interpret that you can obviously increase the attributes that you are lacking if you if you have the ability to train uh because a lot of people don't some people are born without arms and legs but you with two arms and two legs are sitting at home jerking off the porn hub flabby and fat if you have the ability to train you should be doing it but also you know there are some things that some people are just better at and you can counteract that problem by teaming up with people who compensate for your weaknesses. People who are strong in areas where you are weak and you team up with people where you are strong in areas where they are weak. I don't think between the people in this house and our group of friends, we lack anything. Correct. Anything, Correct. literally anything. We can sit as a group and have a conversation about anything with anyone in the world and give useful insight and change people's lives for the better because although I am not perfect, our team compensates one for each other. And that's the point of brotherhood. So excel in one area if you lack in others. I have people say to me, Andrew, I'm short. What do I do? I'm short. Okay, God made you short. Fine, good. Doesn't matter. You can't change it. What you can do is become as strong as an ox and become filthy rich and monumentally important and extremely influential. You can do that. I have people say, I'm poor. You should be strong. Oh, I'm strong, but I don't have any money. Okay, then teach others to be strong. Yes. You, there's always a way you can take your advantages and use them. And by teaming up with other men, the other people, you can build a team in which there are no weaknesses. So if you have a disadvantage, you also have somewhere God has given you a distinct advantage over others. And it is your duty to excel in that realm. It is your duty to become so monumentally influential and powerful within that specific criteria in which you have the capability to be brilliant, that your weaknesses no longer appear because they can be simply overshadowed by your network work or overshadowed shadow, by your absolute competence. By constructing the correct mindset, you can be in the exact same scenario you're currently in, living the exact same life with a different mental model in which you view the world. And you will not only feel more powerful, you will be more powerful. You'll achieve more amazing things. You will be greater. You will be happier with the same car, the same woman, the same house, same income, the same everything, but your mind changes the lens in which you view the world. Lenses change things, rose tinted glasses, perhaps dark glasses. You can put glasses on, change the lens, and you can view the world differently by changing how your mind is constructed and put together and the way you view the world. That is the point of mental Aikido. Living this great life, you're doing everything you're supposed to do, but deep inside when you look in the mirror at night, you know you are sad. And you are sad because your soul hurts, because you need God. When God becomes your ally, but no mortal man is worth fear or even respect, I will destroy any mortal man on the planet. I fear one person, and that is God alone. So God just broke your heart on purpose to show you that the way you're living your life and the man you are simply are not good enough. What have you changed since? You need to get up and work so hard that even in the eyes of God, he is proud of you. God loves his creations, which show him their true potential and beauty by getting up and trying your absolute best and becoming a man of, of moral standing. He will reward you and bless you. You are wasting your energy. Heartbreak is unlimited motivation. If I was heartbroken, I'd be in the gym every morning. I'd be a beast. I'd be running. I'd be working. I couldn't sleep. I'd be an absolute animal. I became me. 
through tedious, arduous, difficult, never-ending work. You're a failing God. If you were the best version of yourself and you were waking up every day trying your absolute best to be a unique and special individual, then you would not be failing God any longer and he would not plague you with this bad luck. And you need to become a formidable force of man that cannot be replaced or replicated anywhere else on God's green earth. That's what you must do. This is going to repeat endlessly. It's a cycle that will not fucking change until you take the message from God and become the man you're supposed to be. If you wake up each day and go, I don't owe anybody anything, I don't have to prove anything to anybody, then you are a loser because you are absolutely not being correct. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, if you have two arms and two legs and you can think and you're not trying your absolute best, that's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and then to build something amazing. It's the best thing about being a man, you have to build who you are. Right? You can decide if you want to be a funny comedian, or a musician, or a kickboxing world champion, or fight the Matrix. You can decide whatever you want to be. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fail. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard, and not be in shape. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try, and you actually want it, and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're gonna get what you want. So when I see people who don't have what they want, I consider them losers. And this may be elitist, I understand that. But if I put myself through endless pain to end up where I am, it's very hard for me to have sympathy on the man who's afraid of pain. You're avoiding pain. I've been through endless. I now have everything I've ever desired. You have none of the things you desire. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because you took the easy way out. Am I supposed to look at you and go, oh, poor dude? No, you were a fucking coward. You didn't go through the shit I went through. You didn't put it on the line. So you deserve your substandard reality. Because if you actually wanted it, and you actually tried, you have it. You can have anything you want. The universe is super giving. There's not a car I can't have, there's not a house I can't buy. If I want to go to a yacht, if I want to go to Antarctica, if I want, there's nothing I can't have at a bam. Because I've decided to become this man. It's the same for absolutely every single one of you at home. If you want it, you can have it. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, oh, but I tried my best and I still didn't get it. You're lying. You didn't try your best. That is a fucking lie. The universe gives it to everybody who genuinely tries. And I know that to be a fact because this world's competitive. We're all competing against each other. And the majority of people don't try. The world is hyper competitive. If you're going to be a man who's going to sit and say, I'm just sad, you are always going to lose in competition to men like me. Yeah. And there has to be losers for there to be winners. I am tired of sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work for anybody. I'm not going to sit here and be sympathetic for people who say they're too sad to try hard and be their best. Guess what? Perhaps I was sad every time I did exactly what I was supposed to do and trained anyway. Perhaps I was afraid when I fought anyway. Perhaps I was tired when I worked anyway. This is how you get ahead in life. I don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for these people who sit here and say, well, I feel this way, so I can't. Then don't do it. Stay down there. The winners are at the top, and the winners at the top don't give a shit about how they feel. We wake up and we perform regardless of how we feel, day after day. So if I'm going to ignore my own feelings, I'm certainly not going to take into consideration anybody else's. Yeah. Why am I going to ignore how I feel and make sure I'm constantly performing regardless, flawlessly, and then sit and go, oh, but he doesn't feel good, so he's allowed to fuck up. No, you are not. You're not allowed to fuck up to your ancestors or to God or to yourself. You have to perform. This is how it, this is what being a man is about. The baseline of masculinity is doing things you don't feel like doing. I can't comment on being a woman because I'm not one, but the baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up, he gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. You can't sit there as a man and say you don't feel like it. You're not allowed to not feel like it. You're supposed to do it anyway, regardless. Yeah. So when a man sits there and says, oh, but you don't understand, I'm struggling with motivation. If you are struggling with the motivation to be a winner, then stay a fucking loser. No problem, stay a loser, don't care. Because in my circle, there's no losers around me. Your energy is disgusting, I find it revolting. I don't like weakness around me, even near me. Even people coming up saying hello to me. If you're depressed, don't even shake my hand. I do not have time for losers on any regard, winners only. You're the person who wakes up, does work, is fantastic at it, and takes three days off, you're gonna lose. They say that hard work beats talent, and talent doesn't work hard.
freak me. You have to be consistent. You decide. Are you the kind of person who wants to make a lot of money in this life? Or are you the kind of person who wants to look back on his 30, on his 20s, or 40 on his 30s, and look at that decade and what did I do with that decade? Well, I didn't get rich. I didn't travel the world and live like they didn't take the picture. What did I do? I had a day off here, a day off there, a bunch of nothing days amalgamated into the decade of nothingness, and you're just wasting your time. If you want to win, you need to be You don't need to be the smartest. Not at all. You have to be the guy who's there. I guarantee you, I guarantee you right now, IQ has nothing to do with how successful you are. But it's going to determine how successful you are. Are you there every single day? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? day after day. And also by the sales. I knew guys who were terrible. Back in my day, the sales was like all the time. I was smooth, I was the best. We had some other guys who were smooth, they landed the deal, go buy a nice car. We had people who were terrible. When I say terrible, I mean they had a thick Indian accent, didn't speak English that well, didn't know the script that well, didn't know the answers. But they were always in the top 20% of the company because they just hammered the phone. They just were on it. They needed to feed their family in Bangladesh. They didn't give a fuck. They were just calling. That's it. Day after day, when you're on month break, he's on the phone. You can win with hard work alone. And that's what's amazing about the universe when I say that. God will give you anything you truly want. If you truly want money, if you truly try hard, and you truly listen to us, you are going to have as much money as you can possibly have. But if you think you want money, but you kind of want something else, or if you're arrogant, or if you're lazy, you're going to end up somewhere in the middle if you're lucky and talented, and you're not talented. Do you know what you're a normal dude? Because when you're a normal dude, you're a loser. You don't get to do amazing things. What's interesting is none of you have had a normal life. You've had a unique and individual life path. The things you've gone through, nobody else on the planet has gone through. You've lived certain experiences, the school you went to, the time you were picked on in that class, the girl who broke your heart. Every single thing you've been through is unique, like a fingerprint, a completely unique life. And somehow, manage to stay completely non-unique. It's almost impressive how you can have a completely unique life experience and still end up average. How the fuck did you do that? Your life's different than everyone else's and you still look and fall and sound and act like everybody else. Like a dummy. That happened because you have not paid enough attention into analyzing your life. Self-analysis. Every single time something good happened to you, every single time bad, something bad happened to you, not spent enough human hours sitting and thinking and trying to work out why it happened. How to make sure the good things happen more often. How to make sure the bad things happen less, less often. What was God trying to teach you? You were trying to teach you something. You think, oh, I just got scared. No, God sent you a lesson. But you didn't pay any attention to it. Do you understand? Everything that's happened to you has been sent from God himself to guide you on a unique path. Everything good and everything bad. And the point of the unique path is that you end up a unique person. But you are failing!